Hello crafty friends, it's Jess from JessCrafts.com and today I have a card that's pretty clean and simple but features a cool watercolor background that's created with some distress inks and water. And I'm also using the Gerda Center Designs clear stamp set called Heavy Friends. I'll be featuring the whale from the stamp set and also a sentiment. I am taking my round mini foam distress ink blenders from Tim Holtz and several colors of distress ink. I'm using cracked pistachio peacock feathers and salty ocean. I'm starting with peacock feathers in the center and um, on the top I'll add the cracked pistachio and on the bottom I will add salty ocean. For today's card I wanted to incorporate the cracked pistachio green color. I like that blue green as an ocean color and it's not one that I've got a chance to play with yet. In the past I would usually use tumbled glass, peacock feathers, and salty ocean, but um, I wanted to try something a little bit different as a color combination with the brand new cracked pistachio. I think that um, using some mermaid lagoon at the bottom would have been a good idea too, but unfortunately I don't have my mermaid lagoon labeled in my drawer, and so when I went to pick colors, salty ocean just kind of popped out at me in a way that mermaid lagoon doesn't yet. And so as I continue to blend it up, the um, colors on, I wanted to leave the edges not as blended out like a softer color so I'm laying down heavy color in the center of the card and only a little bit of color as it gets towards the edges. I just want to create kind of a fade away effect and center most of the attention inside the card. The panel that I'm working with is unsurprisingly a stitched rectangle panel um, cut with the Lawn Fawn stitch rectangle die. And I'm just using regular paper. This is not watercolor paper, even though I'm going to be adding watercolor and letting the Distress Ink react with water. I took my mini mister and I sprayed it in my hand and then I'm letting droplets fall out of my hand as I squeeze my hand onto the paper. I know that Tim Holtz is coming out with a new mister that will allow you to get several different kinds of spray from one mister and I'm really excited about that because I think it will be super fun with techniques like this but for now I use what I have and so to get big droplets I spray the water into my hand and let droplets drip out and then to get some smaller droplets I'm spraying it onto my fingers and then flicking my fingers onto the paper and this will create the effect of him swimming in some water. And I did find that this stays wet for a little bit longer here on the just regular cardstock and I probably should have dried it with a heat gun before I do my stamping. But I'm going to be stamping the whale and the bubbles onto the background paper mostly as a reference so that I'll know um, if the coloring is the way that I like it around it like for instance that I have enough blue or green or, or such showing and also to make sure that the droplets um, that you see there where they where the distress ink reacted with water that I had a sufficient amount of those based off of where the whale was so I stamped the whale and the bubbles down but they did bleed just a touch because the paper wasn't completely dry yet so I go in and dry the paper and I um, try to see if it's still okay or if the bleeding was a little too much and I actually found that it was alright but you could neaten up the edges of the bubbles with some like with a Copic multi liner or a memento tuxedo black marker and for the whale I wasn't worried as much about having clean lines because I'm actually going to be coloring the whale on a separate piece of paper fussy cutting it out and then adding it on top with some foam tape for a little dimension to color the whale, I'm starting by laying down a coat of W1, and as mentioned, I'm going to be doing some fussy cutting, so I'm not at all worried about getting outside the lines, and it's a really Im simple image to cut out, so I think it's worth it not to have to fussy cut. i sorry, not to have to color in the lines, and it's worth fussy cutting. I'm going to be using W3 and W5 to create the darker parts of the whale. I'm going to, in this instance, make the whale darker on the bottom. My thought process there is that the sunlight would be coming in from the top of the ocean and so therefore the shadow would be on his belly. Although I know that some whales are lighter on their stomachs. And um, in keeping with that, I decided to take a colorless blender and put some little dots on his stomach. This is something that I've seen a lot of others do. I know Nicole McGork does it a lot, and I really like the way that it looks. And I don't like to do it on all my critters, but I just wanted to give it a shot and let you see what that technique would look like. 
So I'm just placing the colorless blender as a dot and then I let it dry and I place the dots in the same place again and it just pushes the color out of the way and leaves a little white dot. For the bubbles, I'm just taking a really light blue, I think it's a B60, and coloring in the bubbles just a little bit so they stand out somewhat from the paper, but I'll also be adding glossy accents which will really make those bubbles pop. I wanted to add the sentiment from the stamp set and I wasn't sure if I wanted to put it on a banner or if I wanted to stamp it directly onto the background, but I decided that I'd like to stamp it directly onto the background because I don't want to cover up any of the interesting background that I had created with the water droplets. And so this turns out to be a really clean and simple card because the sentiment's directly on, while there is two layers because I wind up layering the stitch rectangle panel on a solid cardstock and then onto the card base like I normally do, um, there's no sort of embellishment layers. And I wanted to make sure that um, there was enough interest to the card, and even though there wasn't a lot of embellishment, so I take a um, Perfect Pearls Mist in Blue, and I spray that down onto the paper. When you use the Perfect Pearls Mist, I recommend making sure that it's completely mixed in, the sparkle on the bottom, so you turn the bottle over and you make sure none of the sparkle powder is sitting on the bottom. But also, be sure to hold the bottle at least six inches from your paper. If you hold it too close, you're going to get really concentrated areas of color, and that might be a look you're going for sometimes, but if you're trying to just sort of give an overall mist of sparkle, then six inches to 12 inches is probably good. And what I love about my Ranger craft sheet here is that with the distress inks, with the glimmer mist, all of it I can apply right to the card, not have to worry about it because I can just wipe it off in the end. For my glossy accents, I put them in this fine line bottle and I'm going to leave a link to this bottle because I actually like the way that it worked out. The I wanted originally to take the cap off and just put it on my glossy accents bottle, but it did not fit. So instead, I just took my glossy accents and squeezed them out into this bottle. And while I lost a little bit of glossy accents, it was totally worth it because I can get these little tiny bits of glossy accents. And so once I add that, I'm going to set it aside to dry, and that'll be it for my card today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're interested in more crafty videos, you can always subscribe to my channel. I'm going to leave links to the products in the video description below and to the Gerda Steiner Designs website where you can pick up this clear stamp set. Thanks for watching. Bye.